and you're alive, I hope so. So happy Monday, happy Eclipse Day here in America. Um, so I want to deep dive into this fear of action. Like what if we don't don't know what to do next? Because really the fear of action, like should I take inspired action? How do I know if it's inspired action? What is inspired action? What is action without inspiration? What is action with perspiration? We really, really need to go to the heart behind why there's so much fear. This was one of the one of the contributing reasons why was because I was seeing people get going through analysis paralysis like oh my gosh I have so much that I could choose to do but what if I do the right thing and what if I make this decision and I push this person away what if I make the decision and then I get fired what if I make this decision and the escrow doesn't go through what if I right and so we're we're constantly bouncing in and out of faith right like we we treat faith like as in belief, right? As in we believe this is working, okay? As a two-way door and faith is only meant to be understood as a, as a one-way in. There is no exit, right? Meaning I'm believing and that's it, right? Not, oh, I, I can go right back out and doubt, right? Now, I know that we get doubt, but what does that do with our fear of action? Well, what is action? Well, I mean, think about action in the context of making a movie. If you don't have action, you don't have a story. You don't have a movie. You don't have a way to connect to an audience and so on and so forth. Have you ever seen a film where no one's ever acted for an hour and a half to two hours and they just simply sit there the whole time? I still have yet to find one, right? Because you need action to tell the story. You need action, but and, and action is always telling a story. Action is telling the story of your current beliefs, right? And so this is why you can't fear action. You should not fear what's next, okay? You should not fear what is next because what that's doing is that's telling you that your current beliefs are based on fear. Your current beliefs are based on, let's say, I'm not enough. Your current, and in science, we call that self-efficacy, right? Uh, no, it's not a dish. Um, but like basically self-efficacy means do I have what it takes? So every time that you keep thinking that faith or belief is a two-way door, what you're saying is, I believe in myself. Nope. I believe in myself. Nope. You know, like one of those old dragon swings that you might get like at Knott's Berry Farm or like at like a, a carnival ride, right? Where you're like, nope, I believe. I don't believe. Nope. I believe, I don't believe, right? And so there's this story um, in scripture where the character Peter is walking or trying to walk on the water and then Jesus, who is the imagination, comes out and he, and he, and he helps him, right? Now, and he says, oh, ye of little faith. Now, a lot of people take that as an attack. What we miss is that in the ancient Hebrew language, it was actually more of like a wake-up call. It was more of, and, and also mocking. It would, it would be like somebody kind of like, like, um, how do you explain this? So, oh, ye of little faith in modernized language and trying to understand the Hebrew nuances of what, what Jesus, the imagination was saying to Peter, who was us, right? When he says, oh, ye of little faith, when he starts like um, faltering on the water, which is our consciousness, right? Which is our awareness. These are all the symbols that we miss out when we think the Bible's historical and not metaphorical. But like basically what you end up with is he's he's calling him kind of like how we would would make fun of somebody here who keeps dropping stuff like oh my gosh they keep dropping the friggin like um tv remote they keep dropping their keys right and we call them what butterfingers well it's like basically that that's it, it was a hebrew joke and it wasn't a dig it wasn't a slam. Jesus wasn't attacking Peter, right? He was saying, oh, oh, you little faith, right? And so he was mocking him because he was trying to wake him up, right? So it would be like somebody roasting, like not roasting chicken, but you know those roasts like where people get made fun of by their best friends and all this kind of stuff where Hollywood does those as well, right? With with uh, comedians like what what I'm around all of the time, right? And so it's 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 like Jesus, um, Peter being mocked for letting go and the, and the the main reason is is going back to this faith is not a a two-way door faith is in there is no out right and so when you're wondering should i take action or oh my gosh what if i fuck this up right that's not that is not action right now here's the thing there's what two or three of you that are watching this right now okay you've taken action now that action is out of a state so you're always taking action. You're never not taking action, okay? So to fear action is to fear yourself. 
And so when you spend all this time of like, what's inspired action? What's not inspired action? Well, here's a great example, uh, um, right? So a painter does what? A painter's actions are what? To paint, to create, to, cr to, to create something out of their mind, right? And put it onto blank canvas. And usually, hopefully beautiful, or at least to them, right? And so whatever it is, their action is already inspired from a state because they want to be a painter. So then it's always inspired. There's never not a day where, there's, where their action isn't inspired, right? Because you're always operating out of a state. So if your state is, I'm afraid of my action, then you're still operating out of a state. You're, you're just not operating out of the state that you want to be in. Right. And, and, and what's a state? A state is what? A body of beliefs. And what are a body of beliefs? Not one single one. It's a body of beliefs that support your main core belief. Okay. So if you believe that you are a person who is afraid of yourself, you're going to find reasons why you're afraid of yourself. So again, inspired action, meaning fearing action of like knowing what to do next, right? Just do next because, and I'm going to tell you why, because there's actually a powerful set of techniques that Neville gives us, okay, that could actually pretty much foolproof you to basically ensure you never make a mistake. Because in Neville's world, mistakes don't exist in the same way that we understand them to exist here, okay? And I'm going to explain that in a minute, so that, that you stay on, okay? And so what I want you to get, though, is that you can't have a story. You can't have a movie. You can't have a film. You can't have an experience without action, okay? So like I said, at the top of this talk, can you watch a movie without action for that's two and a half hours long of no action? No, you would get bored. You need action, okay? But again, you will always be acting. You press the button to watch this right now, right? So that's an action. And there, there's a state that fueled you to do that. Maybe it's a positive state of like, hey, I want to learn something new or hey, I want to support this person or hey, I'm curious. All of those are positive states. Maybe you're like, I'm hopeless, so I need hope. Okay, so that's a state. Okay, and maybe that caused you to press this button. But either way, you are always taking action. Okay, so never fear action because you're always taking it. All right. So when somebody says and comes to me like in my coaching program, like, oh, yeah, but what if I screw this up? What if I end up taking action and then it pushes the, the uh, person further away? Right. And so. Um, so, OK, so that was weird. I think somebody was leaving a, a, a voicemail. So again, yeah, canciones del despertar, right? So when I started doing vision boarding and started visualizing better, right? So did, let me ask you, canciones, did that help you with your action? Did you fear action, right? Did that bring more fear or did that actually reduce fear when you went to go make a decision, right? So again, what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit more about this and even the neuroscience behind this, because as you know, I'm trained in neuroscience and this is what we do, by the way, in my um, coaching program. We use neuroscience, we use behavioral science, we use psychology because it all comes together. It's actually quite well complemented. Okay. So again, if you are, for example, oh my gosh, what if I tell my boss that I want to quit? What if he fires me on the spot? What if I tell my colleague or my friend at work that I want to quit because I know that I'm going to get a new job, right? Now, what's, what's very interesting is Neville actually talks about this. And he says, you know, if you're trying to manifest something and it's a better paying, like you want more income, don't necessarily quit that job. Right. Because that job may and like in the next two weeks, you might get a raise or in the next two weeks, you know, something might happen and they need you in a new position that gives you triple your income now. Right. But that doesn't mean that you fear an outcome. So, for example, he tells the story of one guy who ended up saying, oh, my gosh, you know what? My um, my my boss and them, they don't like me. Right. Kind of kind of scenario. It's a little bit different than that. But basically he tells the story of this guy and then he says, okay, change your, change your inner conversations. So then the guy changes his inner conversation and they like him and they start saying how well of, of, uh, of an employee that they're happy to have him and so on and so forth. Okay. And then what ends up happening though, is because the guy still remembers, right, that they mistreated him. The guy tells Neville's friend, like, Hey, I'm still going to quit my job. And so then the guy started actually manifesting or actually visualizing for his friend that he would still get money and 25% more. So I think it was like two weeks later or something like that. And he knew he was kind of on a deadline. And so 
he ended up manifesting this new job and 25% more income, right? And again, that is, so, so what am I, why am I sharing that with you? Because the guy still took action. So the guy still took an action that looked like from the outside, wow, that doesn't make sense. Like, why would the guy quit a job? Because, right, because we praise money here. And let me, let me break down this idea of money because um, when we think of money as like something that's bigger than us, it's harder to manifest it. Okay. So you, so you, you can't use words like big or impossible, or it takes forever, or why is that person have more money and I don't and so on and so forth. That's all limiting beliefs. Those are all conditioned. So then you're going to believe and experience those conditions, right? Because we only believe and experience our states. Are you with me? So again, what you want to do the Oh, is when we're coming, cause, cause remember today is all about why, when should I take action? Why is it so hard to figure it out? Why do I have analysis paralysis? Right. And if you've never heard of analysis paralysis, it's from psychology. It's the idea of like, what if I do this? What if I go this way? What if I don't go this way? Oh my gosh. Can you help me? Right. And so, so right. Um, and so what if I do this? What if I go here? What if I turn left and rather than right, what if I, right. And so what we do is we don't do anything. Okay. What if we don't do anything? And so again, that is still out of a state. That means that's, that's out of a body of beliefs that you should not move. But that body of beliefs, by the way, I guarantee you is, is not fueled by action. You are actually fearing your own power. You are actually fearing your own ability to make a change that could actually get you what you want. So let me say it this way. You fear what you want. I know that you're mentally going to be like, no, I don't because obviously I want it. No, no, you don't. Because Neville says you have to have a strong desire. Oh, Mesh, I'm going to definitely, 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 definitely welcome, by the way. Um, I'm definitely going to answer that. And so you fear the old, that, that the new story is not going to be more powerful than your current story. And so then you end up living in your old story because your old story is safer than the new story. Okay. And that's what fear does to you, all right? But again, when you fear action, you're not fearing action. You're fearing yourself. You're fearing that your current state has more power than if you took action already, okay? And I'm, don't worry, I'm gonna give you some tips from NLP, I'm gonna give you some tips from neuroscience, all this kind of stuff that, that's gonna help you overcome this, okay? But I wanna answer this question. Um, from Onesha. And again, welcome. And uh, by the way, if you're looking for coaching, uh, I have an awesome coaching program, a set of them actually, uh, and a free Discord group um, on my bio that you can join. It's free. Uh, but I do have coaching packages that are backed by Harvard Science and so on. So let's answer this question. I want to manifest SP. How can I know she is a good girl for me? So again, people will only represent to you, right, what you believe about them. And that's it. That is it, Onesh. So like, if you believe that she is possibly a bad girl, then guess what? She's going to mirror that. If you believe there's a possibility she might cheat on you, guess what she's probably going to do? And by the way, it may not happen for a month, it may not happen for 10 years, but what you have to fundamentally do is you have to change and revise your beliefs. This is why Neville's, Neville's technique for revision is extremely powerful because it changes the past and it changes you in that in that set of beliefs, right? And so what, what would it mean for you to trust her? Because let me say it this way. If you don't trust her, then you actually don't trust yourself because she's only mirroring your own concerns and your own fears, okay? So, and this is the same with action. If you think action is going to screw something up, it's only going to mirror what you believe about action, Okay. If you think action can actually take you away from your desire, then it's going to do that. Right. E well, either that, or it's going to do where, again, where most people, where I see and end up having depression and anxiety. And they're like, Oh my gosh, I've got to go get beta blockers and I've got to go through therapy. By the way, nothing wrong with any of those. But the main issue is that if you're dependent upon those to actually take action, that's not a life right? And so I, me as a coach, I'm dedicated to using science and like I said, Harvard-backed neuroscience training and all this kind of stuff, right? And so you want it to get to the point where action is your friend, not your enemy, okay? Any belief that you have is, is and can be limiting, 
okay? In fact, I always tell my coaching clients that all beliefs are limiting beliefs. Why? Because we are divine by nature. That means anything that we become aware of, we're telling God to become aware of and amplify in our lives and make bigger, right? So I would rather choose limiting beliefs like I'm, you know, I always have money or money comes to me easily or, you know, um, I have a successful YouTube channel, whatever it is. I want ones that are always guided by the limits of possibility rather than the limits of impossibility. Do you hear the difference? Right? So did that help you, Omesh? Let me, let me know your thoughts about that. Um, and again, stay on because I'm going to be giving you loads of techniques at the end of this on how to downregulate the fear of action and whether you know it, it's inspired action. But let me just say it this way, okay? Especially if you've jumped on because there's about eight of you, right? Is that everything is inspired action. So remember how I just said all beliefs are limiting beliefs? Well, all action is inspired action. People are going to be like, no, I'm calling BS on that one. No, wait, 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 wait. Every single step you take in this world from birth to death, okay? Every step is inspired by a state, okay? That means you are inspired, okay? That means you are inspired by your set of beliefs. Your actions are always inspired. Now, let me prove to you that that's the case, okay? Not only, not only in manifestation worlds, not only in manifestation languages, right? But in the world of neuroscience, because, and I do want to come back to you again, Amesh, all right? But like basically in neuroscience, so, so uh, check this out. So do you know what's happening to you right now? Not only right now, but every single day, every single day, your actions are already, already planned out for you. So this idea of like free will, yeah, that's a joke, right? We, we, we worship that in the West, especially, especially in these hyper-individualized like uh, um, countries where, where we focus on being an individual. We always love to worship the idea of being an individual, okay? And so the reality though is even neuroscience argues against that and how. Well, guess what? When you want to go make a choice, okay? Your choice making or your ability to make a choice according to neuroscience is already chosen for you. Take it in. It's already chosen for you, but how? So every single time that you go and try to make a decision, it's going to base your decisions on what you've already done. Okay, how? Well, basically what happens is when you have a desire, your prefrontal cortex pops on. Boom, that's this part of your brain. That's also where you get your personality and identity and all and 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 all those things from, right? And then it's fueled by the amygdala, which is not just your fear center, it's your emotional center as well, right? Yes, it does talk about fear in it and but there's more to it, okay? And then that will access the hippocampus, okay? Here's the Hippocampus. Everybody loves that word. Hippocampus has nothing to do with hippos or being on a college campus. It'd be kind of cool. But hippocampus is the area of the brain that storehouses your memories. Guess what? Guess what a human is? A human is a a, a series of um, um, behaviors defined by and informed through their most repeated memories. Okay, are you with me? So humans are a collection of their most repeated, powerful, emotive memories. That's what you are. So then when you go to make a decision, your brain accesses various different areas, but one is the prefrontal cortex. Another area is the, um, the uh, hippocampus. Then the hippocampus looks and says, hey, I need to go wake up the basal ganglia. The basal ganglia is partially what happens when you go to physically move. Okay, that means when you're taking action, physical action in this world. But guess where the basal ganglia gets all of its info from? The hippocampus. Where is the hippocampus all about? It is about your memories. Where does then that go backward? It goes into your prefrontal cortex, who you think you are. So again, your state, your set of beliefs are telling you what your actions are. Right now, as you're listening, okay, your brain is already, already made a decision of what you're going to do next for the next three to five seconds, right? And so this is actually just neuroscience research, right? And so, and, but where, how? Well, again, I, I just showed you the neuroscientific trajectory of what's going on, right? Meaning the path that your brain takes to get you to where you are. So everything that you've done now and will do in the next five minutes, it has already been chosen for you. 
But how? Because you've already chosen an identity, which is a state, which is a set of beliefs that you keep repeating over and over and over. And the more that you repeat them over and over and over, you get dopamine and then you get repeated over and over and over and over, right? And then that forms a personality. And then the personality is, is your prefrontal cortex, which goes back to your hippocampus, which is now setting up only, by the way, your, your brain has loads of memories, but your prefrontal cortex is your personality, um, which includes your ego as well, right? And it accesses only the memories that reinforce. So your brain's like on confirmation bias mode, right? Like it's in that mode of confirmation bias. It's constantly looking for reasons why it's right, right? Hey, you're afraid of walking downtown um, and um, like, you know, downtown Los Angeles. Okay, well, I'm gonna look for reasons why you're right. And you may even not have a memory of downtown Los Angeles being that, that unsafe, but you will have a memory of not feeling safe. So it will access that memory, which the more you repeat it, you're going to end up not ever walking down in downtown LA because you've been taught or trained or have experienced some sort of unsafe scenario that is reinforcing you that's creating your personality. Okay, that is why you're already taking action. Even when you don't go to downtown Los Angeles, that's still action. Inaction is still inaction. All right, that's what the word means. You're still acting even when you're not acting. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of a, a five second breather and answer this question and we're gonna come back to this, okay? So, I got it. Universe isn't doing anything sending wrong girl to us. Instead, we change beliefs about us and this will affect back, not universe is deciding you, meaning to say mate. Yeah, so again, the, the universe is always for you. So another way of saying that, right, is that the universe or God or love or Jesus Christ so the imagination, whatever you want to believe, source, right, is always saying yes to you. You're never getting no. Like the answer is never no. So let me say it in a very, very religious way. All of your um, um, prayers are always answered. Always. There's never, there's never a such thing. I know Garth Brooks was wrong. There's never a such thing as an unanswered prayer. Okay. Never. Because the inner self, the subconscious, God, uh, again, whatever nickname you want to use is always saying yes. So how does that work? Well, if you're like, I'm afraid of action. Yes. Uh, I'm a billionaire. Yes. Um, I, I, I have clarity on who I want to fall in love with. Yes. I have a big house. Yes. Uh, houses are, 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 are unsafe to live in. Yes. Right. Cars always break down. Yes. Right. Um, my mother's always hating me. Yes. So again, you're always getting yes, okay? And so, well, okay, so yeah, let me, because you just brought that up right at the same time, I was just gonna go back into action. So, okay, I've heard that God removes some people because they aren't good for us. What's your take on that? Okay, so, and again, I'm probably gonna go deeper and I can give you more deeper answers. Of, of course, this is what, about another 10, 15 more minutes here, right? But um, if you want more answers, definitely join the free Discord group, but I'm also I do coaching as well. But I do wanna answer this. So um, Neville says it this way. As you begin changing, as you begin growing, like let's say that your current state is, I don't have money, right? Or I feel lonely, which a lot of people do when they want an SP. Okay, which means a significant person, right? Or whatever, a special person. Okay, and so if you want to change that feeling, to answer your question, Omesh, right? Then what ends up happening is, is that when you're in the process of changing to fit the new person who has, already has that person in their life, right? The SP that's already been in their life for months already, right? Because that's what, that, by the way, that, that's what you're manifesting. We try to manifest, never manifest from the day after. Manifest like weeks or months after. Meaning use your imagination to create the scene of you already being in relationship with this person, Omesh, right? But already having had it. It's, it's she's a permanent or he's a permanent feature of your experience, Okay. And that's what it is. But then also to go back to your question and to answer specifically, right. Is that as you change, you're like, cause that's what this is. You're changing state. You're going from lonely to being in love, right. Or whatever feelings you're currently now, right. You are, you are changing. What's going to happen is because you're changing, people might just start dropping off. People might actually move out. Maybe people might be like, I don't relate to you in the same way anymore, right? That's not a negative thing. It's just a natural after effect. So Neville says, you know, people start dropping away naturally because you yourself changed, 
right? So for example, maybe you start uh, wanting to generate more income, okay? Uh, let's say that you live in a low income area. One, get rid of those labels. Don't, don't call them low income area. Like I'm using this as an example, but get rid of conditions and labels and ideas. Okay, that's your first port of call. You really wanna get good and advanced and that's what my channel's about, advanced in manifestation, right? Then you need to get rid of labels, any label, religious, ethnic, doesn't matter. Okay. And it doesn't, and it doesn't mean anything if you want to use them, but just know that the more that you use them and you buy into them, you limit yourself. Okay. And again, I'm not against people saying I'm this, I'm that, I'm part of this group, part of this race. It doesn't matter. Right. But that's what Paul is saying in, in the Bible. There's neither Jew, no, the, the, there's not, neither Greek, right? Those are ethnic categories in the, in the ancient world. Okay. And so again, the reason why I'm saying this is because the more and more that you layer on like ideas and labels and conditions, you're going to experience all of them. And I'm trying to get you to the point where you don't do that. That's what we do in my advanced group calls, right? Um, or, or my, or my one-to-one, -one. we actually work on the, on the mental hardware and the limiting beliefs that you have and where they came from. And we get you healed up, right? And we restore you to being the best version of yourself because you deserve all of your manifestations. And I really believe that. So again, that's what happens when people start dropping away. You don't have to push people away. It's going to be a natural after effect. And it's happened to me, right? I moved away from being a pastor in a church, you know, um, to now being a full-fledged atheist, right? And so because that happened, I didn't even have to do anything. People just started doing their own thing and, 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 and that was natural. But now I have friends who are in the manifestation world, right? But I, I don't see it as a loss because I don't, think of them as a loss and I wish them well, right? Those were friends and they were part of my life for that particular period and part of that journey, okay? And so again, right? So again, and I do see your question, Raheem. I just want to come back to this fear of action. I see it way too much. I see it way too much, okay? And I see, and as somebody who's trained in mental health, and I've helped many people through their own mental health journeys, even before I got into manifestation, right? Is that I, I see people like literally either coming with mental health issues or leaving manifestation, angry, frustrated, hopeless, because they don't know whether they, they should take action. So I want to go back to Raheem as well, right? And also Omesh, but please let me give me about a couple of minutes and please stay on because I will answer these questions. And obviously I will give you tips from NLP, neuroscience as well. So again, what you want to do though, is you want to see that action is your friend. Now, there's a really cool technique and I'm going to talk about it right now. And then I'm going to actually answer Rahim and Omesh's questions because they're really good, right? Um, there is no such thing as a manifestation fail. But thank you for that question. Because, because we're always manifesting. We're never not manifesting. So let me just say it this way, right? Um, you know, and, you know, SQM, I, I know where that's coming from. But I mean, like, you know, the whole idea is that we are always manifesting only and always from what? Our state. What is our state? A body of beliefs. What is a body of belief? It is one belief supported by five to seven to 12 to 15 different beliefs that, and if you just watch me now, you know where they're coming from. Coming from your hippocampus, which is your, your, your brain's memory retrieval storage. And then it condenses them. This is why, by the way, I'm going to do like a ridiculously like deep dive into Neville's idea of revising or which means changing your memories because there's actually loads Loads, loads of neuroscience that actually back this up. And I'm actually going to do a workshop for like 50 bucks probably. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that because it's called memory reconsolidation in neuroscience speak, right? And your, your memories are always being accessed but they're always being changed every single time that you access them, meaning your memories can change and they inherently or naturally change. And that's what you want to see and hear. Okay. And so, you know, to go back through, actually, you know, I'm just going to answer your questions and then we'll talk back um, about action. Okay. Um, so let me ask, um, go back to SQMs, right? Can manifestations ever fail? 100% not. There's no such thing as failure. Right. And that was actually the tip I was going to give you anyway. So I'm going to give you that tip as well. But like you can never fail because you're always manifesting, meaning you're always manifesting from beliefs. You're always manifesting, which is what Neville calls a state. It's your body of beliefs, but your body of beliefs are reinforced by a state. And that state is called your identity. And your identity is something that keeps repeating. Right. And so 
Well, no. I mean, uh, Miss T, or is it Miss TJ? Sorry. Welcome, by the way. Uh, no. Because, and, and, and you're never failing. You're always manifesting. You might, what you call fail, because you are not in the state of what you want to manifest. But you're always manifesting. Does that make sense? Right? So, can you fail the only time, and this is actually what Neville says, so that, that's a great question, can you ever fail? So, can you ever fail? So, Neville says the only time that you ever fail is when you give up on your desire. So, he calls it, and he's, he's breaking up the whole idea from the Bible about sin, okay? So, like, sin is missing the mark. But here's the thing, and this is a really, really cool verse, and you may have heard me talk about this before, but it's in Ephesians, and it says, in your anger, do not sin. Okay, that means... Now, when you hear the word anger, fill that in with any emotion you want, right? And any of, 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 I don't like calling emotions bad. I think that's the worst thing that manifestation communities have ever done, whether it's Esther Hicks, whether you follow Neville, whether you follow yourself, it doesn't matter. Emotions are never bad. You have given it that condition. You have given it that label, so therefore you will experience it as that label. So when Esther... Mr. Hicks does this whole thing, right? Hell to the... There's no science that backs that up, by the way. Your brain doesn't think in hierarchy. Your brain thinks in the moment, okay? So hear that, all right? So you really, really have to hear this. Um, and this is what I do in my coaching program. We go through this and we unravel that, which means I'm working with people to, to try to heal them from, ironically, a lot of the damaging beliefs that they learn in manifestation, right? So, you will only fail if you give up your desire or what the Bible calls sin because then you're separating because the whole idea of sin is that it separates you from God. What is God? Just a mental metaphor for your desire, your achieved desire, your joy, your excitement, whatever emotions that you tie up with that desire is God, okay? And so what's, what, what can separate you from that is sin, okay? What is sin? You believing that it's separate from you and holding that as truth. So if you don't give up, you will have it. And this is a guarantee. This is from somebody who thought, you know what? I had to go through surgery to actually feel better. And I didn't. And I've given up that idea, right? And so I'm talking to you from firsthand experience. This isn't just a coach because I have Harvard training and all this kind of stuff. But I actually have firsthand experience, okay? And I don't share it all the time because people get really, really hung up and obsessed about, well, what, techni what technique worked for you, right? And I'm not big on that because you have to be the one to find the technique. You are the technique. Let me say it a different way. You are the placebo, right? And so you are the very thing that will always be working. And so, yes, my encouragement to you, SQM, is to get tenacious and to be like, I don't care what the hell is going on in my world. I am not giving it up. There's no separation. And so wh whether it's other people saying things to you, whether it's circumstances, looking bleak, whatever it is. And I'm not saying don't feel frustrated. I'm not saying don't feel those things. In fact, I would encourage you to feel all of those emotions. And yet another thing I don't see in the manifestation communities is they vilify feeling it. No, you need to feel emotions. As somebody who's trained in psychoanalysis, right? The worst thing you could ever do is think your, your, your emotions are your enemies. Because even not, well, not only manifestation, but even science shows that the more you bottle up your emotions, your body becomes a storehouse for those emotions and it's looking for ways to get out. So you end up with diseases and all these kinds of things, right? In fact, the argument is what? Disease comes from what? Bottled and stored up emotion, okay? So don't bottle up and store your emotions. But yes, to answer your question more directly, SQM, can you fail to get it? If you give up on it, yes, that's where you actually do. If you don't give up on it, I, I don't get to tell you what that timeline is, right? Because everybody's different for, um, and, but if you, if you give up on it yourself, which by the way, is 100% on you, right? There's nobody else involved. So that's where you need to actually realize that as well. It's like, I'm not giving up. Like this, this, this will happen. So then let me go back to Miss T again. And then we're going to go back through because I know Omesh and Rahim ask questions as well. And then we're going to still talk about action and I'm going to give you some tips. So again, um, manifestation could fail if you continue to think. Okay, um, again, negative thinking 
isn't the same as separation unless the negative thinking is you believing you're separated. So let me say it another way. Neville says that God and Satan will always be with you, which means you will always have doubt. You will always have your achieved desire. You will always have doubt. So what you want to do is you really want to get like 80-20, okay? And so 80-20 means you want to get 80% secure and sure that you have whatever it is that you desire. Then 20% is, okay, well, I know doubt's going to be part of this deal. So rather than like trying to buy, I got to fight doubt. Blah, blah, blah. No, it's just part of the training, right? Neville says we're in like this whole world as a school, right? And you're being trained, what? To wake up, to wake up to what? Your own divinity. What is another metaphor for the divinity? Your power, your ability, okay? So look at all these things, including doubt as an opportunity to grow, to become more power, to walk into your power, to believe you are powerful, okay? Rephrase doubt as opportunity. In fact, neuroscience shows that when you do that, you actually increase the life of your telomeres. The telomeres are the caps on the end of your cells and they die off as you age. Check this out. And I know you may have heard this before if, you've, if you're in my coaching program, okay? Is that basically the more that you get good at reframing doubt, okay? Then guess what? You can live longer. You literally give yourself eternal life in one sense, right? By actually reframing doubt as opportunity, by reframing doubt as, um, or even ang anxiety, right? As growth, whatever it is, give it a nickname, make fun of it, do whatever it is, but do not call it doubt. Don't call it doubt. Don't call it fear. Don't call it anxiety. Call it opportunity. Call it excitement. So when I go out and I do stand up, and I get that kind of like, like the butterflies in the stomach stuff. I'm like, no, this is not fear. This is full on excitement because I'm about to go smash this thing, right? So do you, do you hear it? Like there's a difference in mentality, okay? So again, don't fear doubt. So Amesh, okay, that is amazing. Usually how much time it takes to manifest our desire, mainly SP, I mean, roughly a few weeks. So again, Amesh, I see people saying that. And um, yes, it usually can take that long, right? But again, it's dependent upon you, okay? So um, I know somebody just shared, for example, on Reddit, I think it was yesterday or the day before yesterday, it took them 28 months, okay? And that's 28 months. That was their timeline. I don't get to choose timelines. So, and I actually think that the more that you choose time, you're measuring, right? So it's like, no, no, it should take two weeks or no, it should take three days. So I know people in my coaching um, program who tell me it's, it mostly takes them three days, right? To manifest almost anything that, that they want. Awesome. But the problem is when we're measuring, it's still time is, is, is better understood as a gap. Time and uh, I'm, I can go into the quantum theory and all this kind of stuff, but I'm not. But basically time is a process, but like if you understand it and you keep measuring, it, it's more of a gap because then you're constantly looking at what you don't have, why you don't have it, how long is it going to take and so on and so forth. So then what, the, what does that do? Creates more separation, right? So yeah, time is an illusion. Even Einstein said that, right? Time is a persistent illusion, okay? All that means is the reason why it keeps showing up is because we keep thinking about it, right? And so don't measure it because in here, imagination, everything is now. You always give yourself everything you want now. You live out here as if you have it now. This is why I'm saying we cannot fear action, okay? Because you're always taking action. And so it it shouldn't be something that, that you fear at all. Let's go back to Raheem. When people start changing, right? For example, when manifesting SP, uh, let's see. Do you see where people outside SP start giving you more attention? Is this a bridge of incidents? So again, so that's a very, very interesting question. So when you start loving yourself, people are going to start actually mirroring that. So, so this is back to your question. Rahim, if you're still listening, right? And so, of course, that's going to magnetize other people around you, right? And I don't believe in auras and all this kind of, I'm not into the new age side of this, right? But I do believe that, that, that there's something like a field of energy or whatever you want to call it. I don't, I don't like aura stuff. I'm not against it. It's cool. If you believe it, cool. But for me, it's more of like, because you're changing your own perception, because your own, your, your own mindset and set of beliefs, have an energy signature in and of themselves, right? Be, why? Because every belief is what? An emotion. And what is emotion? It's energy in motion, right? And so everything is energy in motion. 
And what you're doing is you've created a field, right? That people are magnetizing towards you. So then when you start loving yourself to bring that SP back into your life, right? You're going to bring other people around you. Maybe they even love you as well. Maybe they even like you, right? And there's nothing wrong with that because all that's doing is proving to you, damn, I'm in the zone. Like I'm in the pocket and I'm already doing this. I don't even have to effort it and it's already coming to me, right? So you can use that as a way to encourage it, right? Now I'm not also for BBL birds before landing, crystals, all this kind of looking for signs, one, 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 one. Those, those things, there's nothing wrong with them, right? And sometimes I'll even use them, but I use them about 4%. Like they're just not there for me because everything is coming from within, right? Everything is responding to you about your world from within. And remember what I said earlier, if you fear action, and again, what does any story need to move it along? Not emotions, just emotions. You need action. So you always must take or need to take action. And you're always taking inspired action because you're inspired by your current set of beliefs, right? So again, a painter who doesn't paint because they're afraid, it's just not painting, right? So yeah, ah, oh, very good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer that. I'm gonna answer that, Miss T. Um, that's a very good, good question. How about I say it this way? You are synchronicity. So if if you see synchronicity, it's because you are lining up, right, within. So like where the Bible says where two or more are in agreement, which is psychological, what it's saying is you've now actually the outer self and the inner self are now combining, which means the subconscious and the conscious mind are in agreement, right? And so you've used your mental conversations. You've changed those to match the uh, inner imagination scenes and all this and so forth, right? And so you've created synchronicity. It's not something that's happening outside of you. That's why Neville was very much against all this stuff is because people looked at, look at all this stuff as outside of them, right? And so then you're constantly giving your power away every single time that you look at things outside of you as some sort of proof. You are the proof and you're the only proof that you need, right? And so when people are constantly looking outside of them, really what they're saying is, I don't trust myself. I don't think I'm God. I don't believe in the power of the imagination to create. I don't trust myself, right? And then what I do as a coach and a psychologist is I help them realize that, that there are some beliefs, whether it be in their childhood, bad parents, whatever it is, you know, bad experiences that have made them not trust their own power, right? And it is like this Marianne Williamson quote, that Nelson Mandela gets like overly quoted with, right? It is not our darkness that we fear. It is our light, right? And so we're always having to play small. And my whole coaching program, why I do this every day, why I'm doing lives every day now, right? Is because I want people to actually fall in love with their light. Because at the end of the day, you have to realize you are the only operant power, okay? And so I want to encourage you right? To realize that you are the only operant power, okay? And so um, please just disregard the uh, quote there, sorry. Um, and so, yeah. Yeah, so, okay. Um, there we go. So um, again, sorry, just had to do that. It was a bit of a distraction. So again, back to this. Um. When you say, should I, should I, or should I not? You're already taking action, it's just mental. Okay, so is there such a thing as inspired action? Somewhat, right? Yes, yeah, 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 Catherine, very, very good, right? When you don't trust yourself, there's a story you've told yourself that really lines up and beliefs that, that line up in agreement that you shouldn't trust yourself. So guess what you're going to do? You're going to create reasons. You're going to create uh, a mental space. You're going to create um, an, um, uh, actions. You're going to create everything out of this belief that you shouldn't be a person who takes action or that you're a screw up. So for example, I even had people in my coaching program when I first started and even their names were like, I screw up or whatever. And I'm like, listen, you have a mentality that you've actually chosen your own social media handle that you actually limited, you, like limited yourself, right? And so you, like people don't really think about that. They're like, oh, that, that's just a social media handle. But remember, everything is coming from a state. All your words, everything you're typing here, everything that's gonna happen at the end, right? 
And so, yes, by the way, yeah, thank you, Raheem. So um, how do you, um, yeah, so here's the thing. So thoughts are things, but thoughts don't create, right? Thoughts emerge, they don't invent, right? So thoughts emerge, and but they don't invent. Thoughts emerge, but they don't invent. So again, that's big, big lie within manifestation, right? Because thoughts are birthed from the state. And this is what Neville says, right? Thoughts, Neville Goddard, by the way. Thoughts um, are, are birthed out of a state. Now you can use thoughts to create, to create a state. So a better way of saying that is imagine that every single day that you wake up, and by the way, this is a really, really, really good technique, okay? Imagine that you yourself are this formless statue every day, every day. So the Bible says his mercies are new every morning, which means his, meaning the imagination. Mercies is the uh, Hebrew word for womb, which is a metaphor for life, which is another metaphor for opportunity, right? So another way of saying is in here are endless opportunities every single time that you wake up for a great day, great life, great moment, great relationships, whatever it is, right? Um, so again, and um, if you don't know, I am doing a Bible study where we're looking at this as psychological and going through the Greek and the Hebrew and the Phoenician and the Ugarit and Aramaic and all these ancient languages to see that this is actually a toolkit for manifesting, right? Not a historical book. So let me know if you'd like to join that. But like basically thoughts don't create. Thoughts will never create. Thoughts only are reinforced and birthed out of a state, which is your body of beliefs. It is your body of beliefs that you are manifesting. Or let me just say this way, your beliefs create your experiences, right? So again, you believe the world's not safe. Guess what you're not going to do? You're not going to go out into the world. You're going to get agoraphobia, right? And so again, your beliefs create your experiences, right? So that's to remove all of the jargon, right? All of the Neville jargon, all of the manifestation, like all of the manifestation jargon. Okay. But then uh, remember going back to this, and then I'm going to answer Raheem's question as well is again, you can use the thoughts are things idea. If you imagine yourself, this kind of like, again, this like unformed statue. And so every single day you start forming new beliefs with your your, your thoughts and emotions, strong emotions, right? And so you're like, okay, I'm good. I am always good, right? I'm, my, my body's perfect. I always get money. I always get compliments. Whatever it is, I'm, I'm a famous person, right? I'm, I'm filming my next movie. Whatever it is, you use those things to form new beliefs, but the beliefs are what manifest, right? And so then what, what you're doing is you're using thoughts and emotions to actually shape and give form to who you are and what to, who you want to be. Okay. So again, how do you um, deal with analysis paralysis, right? Being stuck between two really good actions and ideas. So let me say it this way, and you're going to disagree, but I'm going to explain why. There's no such thing as wrong action. None. Why? Because you're always inspired. You're always inspired by a state. Now, okay. If you're in a hopeless state, it's still going to be an inspired action. It's just going to be inspired from hopelessness. Okay. So here's a really cool technique for you, right, Rahim? And hopefully this will help you. It's actually directly from Neville Goddard's work, right? And uh, this is something that I'm working on, by the way, creating it into a, a program, okay? Hey, so-so. Uh, we still got to get in touch, by the way. <laughs> um, but, um, but basically, there's no such thing as wrong action because you're always doing inspired action, okay? Because you're always inspired from a state. So... When you are met with two ideas, you can't ask for clarity. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. That's what I do, right? If you feel like, hey, which direction is going to send me into the a path that I want to be? There's nothing wrong with that. Going in and asking for advice from other people or anything like that. There's nothing wrong, right? At the end of the day, you're going to get something that feels right. And so that's what it means when Neville says this should be effortless, right? A painter doesn't feel like painting is effort, right? It's, it's, it's what they do. So as a manifester, manifesting shouldn't feel effort. It should feel effortless, right? And so, because we're the painters, we're the painters of our own life. Okay. And so, um, and that's, by the way, Catherine, that's going to be key right now. I'm going to talk about that in a sec, in, in, in a sec, but yeah, thank you for sharing that. And, um, but Neville says this, okay. And this is really powerful. If you really take on what I'm what I'm I'm about to share with you, it will it, it will remove analysis paralysis, okay? So Neville says, right, 
what, and this is a technique I think I've encouraged some of you to do, okay? And um, I'm gonna show you how to do this in a workshop, those that are part of my program, which is like four or five of you that are clients here. So like basically what I wanna do is share with you two things that he says. One is in the beginning of, of your day, do not leave your bed. That means do, do not put foot to the floor until you've planned out your whole day. And that means from the first person in your imagination, creating scenes. If you have to go talk to a friend, imagine it going well, not just a little bit, 10 times well. And then if, if you're nervous about something, imagine it going well and more better than you could ever thought, right? And so, um, oh, I'm still answering it actually, uh, Rahim. Um, and so what you wanna do is you want to start your day manifesting from the first person, right? And you want to go into the first person. And if you have to go to, to work, imagine it, it, it being the best day ever. Or if it's not the job you want to go to, imagine it's, it, it is the job that you want to go to, right? And you go in and as soon as you grab the handle to that door, and even though in this world, it looks like you're not walking into the job that you want to be at, you open that door like you did, right? And then, so again, you're doing all of this. And then at the end of the day, like five or six o'clock, you look at your watch and your imagination or your clock or whatever. And you're like, man, that was such a great day. Like, and remember always in the past tense. And so you're like, today I had a great day. Like, like tell your friend, tell your, your wife, tell your husband, tell whoever you trust in your life, in your imagination saying, I had the best day ever. Right. And so you plan out your whole day, right? So you go through your whole day, da, 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 things unfold. And then at the end of the day, what you do is, and this is the next tip. Okay. And this is answering your question, Raheem. So at the end of the day, what you want to do is you want to revise it. So those of you who are new to Neville, he has a very powerful technique that nobody else has ever talked about, right? Other than probably neuroscience. Okay. And the revision is you're going back through your day, right? You're right. You're in the groggy state. You're on your bed. You're in its favorite chair, whatever it is, because you don't have to go to bed to do this, right? But be in a groggy state and you start revising your day. So let's say that you did everything that you wanted to do at the beginning of the day, but it didn't go exactly that way. So then start revising and changing in your memory the ways in which you wish they would have went, right? Maybe you wanted an invite to go on a boat trip and it didn't happen that day. Revise that it did, okay? So then guess what? Guess what? And this is answering your question, Rahim, okay? If you do both of those every day for the rest of your life, can you ever do anything wrong? No. There's no such thing as a wrong action then, right? And it doesn't mean that you don't learn from things. It doesn't mean that you don't take on board lessons or you don't try to change and iterate and do all of those kinds of things. What it does mean is that there is no such thing as fear of action. And yes, you could use things like Catherine was saying, like um, like there's the, uh, the vagus nerve reset. I don't know if you've ever heard of this. Again, I do this with mental health clients. The vagus nerve reset, you could see um, a tutorial on YouTube. So not vagus as in Las Vegas, but it's V-A-G-U-S. It's a vagus nerve, right? And a lot of people that go through PTSD all right, I usually have to do this for like 30 days, okay? And that will actually downregulate your mind and your nervous system to always be on high alert because that, that's what happens if we're living in certain circumstances that we don't want, right? And let me just say this, from a scientific point of view, most humans are going there through their lives through PTSD. And I'm not trying to say that those who've been to war have have no somehow like it's it's, it's not as serious or whatever it is. What I'm trying to say is that most humans go through trauma because trauma is a form of, of, of repetitive storytelling and we live and then when we don't do action, that's a form of trauma, right? And I know it's surface level trauma, but still, it's still a form of trauma. So you do need to do vagus nerve reset, right? Do deep breathing, use apps like Wim Hof, right? Where he uses his, his uh, breathing techniques, right? Go out, be in nature. It's actually been shown to downregulate the amygdala, right? And you feel connected and you can see abundance everywhere, right? Get into the practice of self-care, okay? So Catherine said, listen, since I started working on regulating my nervous system, I have been better. Yep, uh-huh, I agree. Thoughts emanate from an estate, so we must work on our state of being instead of thoughts. Yes, I mean, imagine this, okay? According to research, we have 5,000 to 7,000 thoughts a day. You try to work on your thoughts, you're never going to stop, right? 
And so you'll just get exhausted. So it's always about the dominant thought or the dominant belief or the dominant state, right? Neville calls that the dwelling place. And so you want to work on the dominant, which is, hey, like, for example, if your dominant state right now is life is shit, then your dominant state that you want to change is life is amazing. Even in the midst of it not feeling real, you have to continue. Right. And so, and that, and that doesn't mean that you may not have days or a drop off or whatever it is that you want to call it. That's fine. But don't believe that because you have a bad day that you suddenly lost your manifestation. Right. Because then that's giving power. No one loses their manifestation. No one. Okay. Right. I mean, like you, and, and so again, everybody's always manifesting. So again, back to this idea. And then I want to give you these two tips. I didn't really mean for this to go that long, but thank you. And again, feel free to join my coaching program. We have stuff like every week we have like $50 workshops. I'm going through how to manifest a, a, an, an SP back um, to, you know, how to create a self-concept, all of these kinds of things. We're also starting a Bible study group, which I think like five or six of you have said that you're interested in. That's only $35 every time we meet. Um, I do have packages. Um, we have an exclusive one that we're actually launching. And if you're interested, just put beta either here or DM me. And um, it's and there's only room for 12 people. I'm not doing any more than that. And it's actually a closed group of group coaching calls. And uh, you get me once a week and we jump on with other people like you who have questions and we work through stuff for about an hour, hour and a half, two hours. I'm not really going to control it. Um, you know, and uh, that's a really, really cool thing. So we're, we're calling it the creator's mastermind. So definitely definitely if you're interested just type the word beta below or type the word beta in um, if you join my discord just type the word beta in a dm to me or just email me which you can see on my bio so again let's go back into nlp stuff let's go back into neville so again raheem hopefully that answered your your question about analysis paralysis and also how about all right how about this i'm going to give you an actual like something from behavioral science how do you get over analysis paralysis sit down this is a really cool technique Okay. And what I want you to do is I want you to sit down, do some deep breathing for it, right? Get centered, all this kind of stuff. Take a piece of paper, right? Or your friend's white t-shirt. It doesn't really matter. Draw a line down the middle. Okay. Then say what your current state is. Loneliness, unhappiness, lack, um, um, no money, whatever it is. It is. Put a line under it, right? Then I'm going to tell you what to do next. Over here, put your ideal state. What What would you like to be? Who do you want to be? How do you want to embody it? Okay? Then I want you to put um, below that action colon on both sides. Action colon. Okay? Not the colon like you go get to go get, get checked at the doctor, right? But the grammar colon. Okay, so action colon, action colon on, 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 on both sides, okay? So then what I want you to do is um, under that, put beliefs colon on, on, on both sides. Okay. And so you're going to actually find clarity this way. This is a really cool technique. Okay. Um, and this is something that I've just, well, I come up with it on the fly, but this is what I do for a job. I'm a behavioral scientist. So basically what you want to do is you want to come up with five to 10 beliefs on each side. Okay. So if you're like, for example, if you're in lack, okay. And you're like, okay, my beliefs are then Share five, okay? Money's hard. Uh, money doesn't come easy. Why does everybody else have money? Blah, 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 blah. And then you keep going down, okay? But, you, but your action from that is going to be what? I don't spend money, okay? Or whatever it, it is because you're going from lack, okay? And, um, and then also with the um, other side, look at your ideal state. What would your ideal state if you were a billionaire do? Well, action, I would buy what I want. So even if you have $7, buy what you want with that $7, right? You don't like, I'm just going to sit and hoard it because what you're telling the universe is I want to sit and hoard money, right? And so, and again, this isn't about irresponsibility, right? And yes, first and foremost, you always want to go in here. Okay, you always want to spend money in here. You want to spend the billions in here. But every time you let let's see of the seven dollars and you want to go buy something that actually is seven dollars, feel like you just spent from a bank account of a billion dollars, right? There's a difference here, okay? Right? So it is about mentality as well. And you have to feel that and generate that. But again, with this list, you want to have the ideal beliefs. The ideal belief says money comes easy to me, like money comes easy to me. People always give me money. I always get well-paid at jobs. I always find contracts. Whatever it is for you, right? You want to create that because then, guess what? With that action, because you can actually go back through and say, okay, I have these five beliefs. What would a person who believed this and what, what kind of actions would they make? What would they take? 
okay? And that's what you want to be doing. You want to be active in your own process, daily process of manifesting, right? And you don't want to allow things to take control because ultimately you are the operant power. And if you give away control, you gave away the control, right? And so you want to be aware of that by actually actively doing this process that I, I, I had actually just given you, right? So again, Name, ideal state, action, and beliefs, okay? And every one, one side is the limiting beliefs. The other side is the, right, the ideal state, okay? And that's going to give you actual practice things. Now, I think, Sadia, if you're on here, sorry, you're going to hear this one again. But this is an actual NLP, NLP technique, and then I'm, I'm going to jump off after this. But this is an NLP technique from Neuro Linguistic Programming. But basically, what you want to do is you want to create what I call the circle of excellence. So the circle of excellence is a mental picture that you create, visualize, whatever you want to call it, right? And you, and you create a circle. Now, that circle itself is a very wide-edged circle. Because what you're going to do is you're going to fill that circle with your favorite color. It could be blue, it could be gold, it could be purple, whatever, that Ryan, <laughs> like, you know, it could be blue, purple, whatever. All right, so anyhow, fill that with your favorite color, okay? And then you're going to actually turn that color up, okay? I'm going to show you how to do that. But what I want you to do is I want you to imagine it's more of like a well that you throw things in and it kind of disappears as you throw it in, but it's still going in there, okay? And then, so again, choose a color, boom, color of your choice, right? And that's going to be the rim of your actual circle, okay? And you're going to throw things into the circle. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to imagine there's a knob right in the middle of your scene from the first person, okay? And so when you do that, and this is actually going to help you, Rahim, as well, and is essentially what I want you to do is I want you to throw whatever it is that you want. So you're like, if those are those five beliefs, throw those five beliefs. So that little first part that I, I had actually given you, right? Yeah, yellow's, by the way, yellow's pretty common, right? Because gold and all this kind of stuff. And it's also bright. I, I actually use yellow or blue. So... Basically, what you want to do is you want to throw in confidence. You want to throw in money. You want to throw in how money's easy. Any phrases or ideas that you want to experience, you throw into it. Okay, you want to, you want abundance? Throw in abundance, right? And so you're going to actually visualize you actually seeing the word or, what, or if you're an image person, then throw in an image that represents abundance, right? Maybe it's a, I don't know, a huge expensive hotel. It doesn't matter. Throw whatever it is that's in there that represents what you're looking for. So for you, Rahim, if it's clarity about this decision, right, then throw clarity in there, okay? But then really, the first one that you should always throw in is, is, is power. Always. Because that's you. You are powerful, right? And so you always, no matter what you're doing, whenever you use this circle of excellence tip that I'm, I'm uh, training you to do, right? then you end up using this to actually bring that into yourself. So again, let's say it's those five things like money, confidence, my SP returns, whatever it is. It doesn't matter what it is, but if you use images, throw images in there. If you use words, throw words in there, okay? Now, there's a knob, right? And you're doing this from the first person. So right now, all you should see is your hands and your legs and this huge glowing circle. Now, that knob is gonna turn up and ramp up the emotion behind what you just put in. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna throw in those five, 10 phrases or five to 10 images that represent where you want to be, okay? And you're gonna imagine them kind of like disappearing, but knowing that they're still in there, almost like a portal, right? And then what you're gonna do is you're going to actually walk in the middle of it. And what I want you to do is I want you to turn that knob, that knob at the lower right, like an actual TV knob, right? Or a radio knob. And you want to turn it up, crank it up. And you want to see the light almost kind of like blinding. Like, and what you want to do is you want to then just sit in the middle or stand in the middle of that circle and imagine everything that you just said and did going through you, not around you, not above you, not floating to your side, through you. Okay. And then once, and then once you have that happening, turn that emotion up again. Okay. And then you're going to either do this, which is like what's, what's called anchoring. And then once you feel that you don't do this before you do it when you feel that powerful emotion. Okay. And you press these two together. Okay. And that's an anchor. What you're going to do is you're going to do this for at least seven days straight. Okay. Five to seven days straight. And then you're going to do this after. If you could do it three times a day, great. You could do it one time a day. Great. Okay. If you do it three times a day, you don't need to do it probably even maybe two or three days. And what you're doing is you're priming your body to actually go where your mind is going. Okay. And then that's going to give you clarity. That's going to give you inspiration. That's going to give you the power. That's going to give you the new ideas. Right. And, and that's going to actually install that within you. Yes. This is like a matrix, like full on move. Right. 
And so again, if you want to do this on your own, it's called the circle of excellence from NLP, right? But, um, you know, I do these more intensely, um, and I'm going to start doing these even more intensely in my coaching programs, right? And so again, try this, but you have to do this more than once. Okay. And then you do that. Or if, if that doesn't work, then choose an image that you prime it with. Okay. And then, or you can do what Matthew McConaughey, the actor does. He uses this similar technique and he actually pats himself on the chest. He actually bangs himself on the, on the chest right before he goes and films, right? Because he's actually using NLP. He's using their circle of excellence saying, I'm going to go kill this. I'm so good. He actually did like talked about this in an interview, right? And so again, you do anything physical, but you have to repeat that physical step every single time. Once you feel or in the moment of being flooded by the emotions, right? And so then when you have doubts, press these two together, right? When you have, whenever you have somebody telling you the opposite, press these two together. And the cool thing is you could do it while they're telling it to you. Why? Because you can hide this. You can just be right next to you pressuring it. And that's going to actually give you the confidence to keep going. It's also going to prime your mind to be like, nope, this is who I am, right? And it's going to bring all those emotions back up in you, okay? Yeah, so that's awesome, Catherine. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, thank you all for being here. Thank you for being amazing. Thank you for being so supportive. Again, if you have any questions or are looking for any more tips, you know, um, you know, if you're looking for any more tips or anything along those lines, uh, get a hold of me. Um, look at um, my bio here. Um, I, there should be emails. There should be a link to my free Discord. You know, jump on. And if you're looking for anything, like if I haven't dealt with anything yet, meaning like you would love for me to explore stuff, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Rahim, I will have to, for some reason, every single time I do this, YouTube wants to make this private. So I have to go in and change that setting, but I have to wait till it's like fully up uploaded. So, but yeah, so check um, out other, my other videos and other live events that I've done like this. And I'm probably going to keep doing live events if you guys keep jumping on like this. So this is really cool. Um, but again, I'm open to other ideas and exploring other concepts. So, uh, either leave them here or email me some ideas or get a hold of me in my discord. But other than that, thank you all for being awesome. Thank you for being amazing. If you're looking for coaching, get in touch. But other than that, please manifest well. You guys all deserve it, and I truly believe that. So thank you again. Much love, everybody. Have a great day. Enjoy the eclipse.